we continue with oscillations. In the last lecture, we learned how to combine two simple harmonic motions when they are in the same direction or when they are in the perpendicular directions. Here, we consider what are known as damped and forced oscillations. Let me remind you that each system is able to oscillate when excited, to oscillate with a characteristic frequency, which is called natural frequency. When the oscillations are damped or forced, then this changes. Let us see in what sense these, these changes take place. So far, we have dealt with oscillations which continue for a long time without any decrease in amplitude. In real life, all oscillations except those forced to maintain a certain amplitude suffer decrease in their amplitude. The decrease in amplitude is caused by dissipation of energy due to frictional forces. A simple way to demonstrate damping is to add a large cardboard disc to an oscillating weight. Let me show you this. Here is an oscillating weight. We have a spring and a weight. It oscillates. If this disc is removed, it will oscillate with natural frequency, which you know is root of k by m. But when I attach a very large disc to it, then the friction due to air becomes considerable. And therefore, the it affects the amplitude of these oscillations. We have seen already equation of a simple harmonic motion is d to y by d t square plus omega squared y equal to 0. Now, for small velocities, the frictional forces are proportional to velocity itself. So, therefore, we introduce a term containing velocity. So, this equation is modified for the damping case to d to y by d square plus 2 b d y by d t plus omega squared y. This factor 2 we shall see is very useful, but otherwise it does not affect anything, where b is a constant representing the forces. Since we know that the oscillations will be damped, we, we have this experience whenever there are frictional forces, the oscillations are damped. We try a solution of the type y equal to e raised to power sigma t, where sigma is a positive parameter. We substitute this solution into the equation d to y by d t square plus 2 b d y by d t plus omega squared y equal to 0. And we get this sigma squared plus 2 b sigma plus omega squared into e to the power sigma t equal to 0. Now, e to the power sigma t obviously is not 0 because that is our solution. Therefore, from this equation we get this equal to 0. And this is a quadratic. It will have two solutions, two values of sigma. And these two values are given by the quadratic equation you can solve minus b plus minus b squared minus omega squared, square root of that. The general solution therefore, will be y equal to e minus b t minus b t minus b is common a then we take the plus sign or minus sign e to the power minus b squared minus omega squared under root times t and we take the plus sign here b into e to the power b squared minus omega squared under root times t. a and b we have introduced as two constants which are determined from initial conditions that is conditions at t equal to 0. And we can determine this if you know the conditions at y equal to 0 and dy by dt is equal to 0. Resonance is an interesting phenomenon. Energy is given to an oscillating system in small steps. You see, we have a periodic force. In small steps, we give on give energy to the system and we build a huge amplitude. You know, energy is proportional to the square of the amplitude. Therefore, we build huge energy by just giving small steps, force in small steps. A series of well timed small pushes builds a huge amplitude. You remember that if we give a large push to a swing for example, it would not give you the same effect as small effects every time the you pass the uh, pass by your friend and your friend gives a push. That gives a very large amplitude, but not one single large push that does not give you large amplitude. Interestingly, on some bridges for example, marching of soldiers is in step is prohibited you know soldiers mark left right left right left right all soldiers and therefore, they generate a certain frequency. If this frequency matches 
the natural frequency of the bridge, then a large amplitude can be built up and the bridge can fall. In fact, this has happened sometimes in some cases. So, therefore, the on some bridges, the soldiers are asked to become out of step, not to march in step. Similarly, some structures may resonate with the frequency of the wind flow and may suffer severe damage. You see, we have huge high towers and the wind flows past them and this gives them um, some oscillations. And if these oscillations given by the wind as it flows past them matches the natural frequency of the tower, then a damage can take place, severe damage can take place. During an earthquake, for example, earthquake shakes you. If you are sitting in a, in a, in a building and there is earthquake, then it shakes the building and you both. And if the frequency of this shaking by the earthquake matches the frequency of the building, natural frequency of the building, you can have a severe damage to the building. So, let us see what in an LCR circuit or also oscillating systems we have seen, seen earlier. When we tune a radio station, now these days of course, we have electronic tuning, you do not do it yourself, but you, you just change the station. But in the older days, there, were a no, there was a knob and we used to change the frequency. So, when we tune a radio station, we actually vary the frequency of the LCR circuit inside the radio receiver and make it equal to the frequency of the signal that is coming. So, if the two match, then the resonance makes the volume and quality of reception much better. Let us take another example of resonance. This one is from the exemplar problems for class 11 prepared by the NCERT. We have here four pendulums suspended from the same elastic support. This is the elastic support and they are suspended from the same support. Their lengths are shown. A is given a transverse displacement and let oscillate. You see, this is the support and these are the pendulums. So, if I give a this A a small displacement and then let it go, then what happens? Because of elastic support, all the pendulums will start vibrating. You see energy is transmitted by this elastic support to this, this and this and all the pendulums start oscillating. However, pendulum C has the same length as pendulum A, therefore it has the same frequency. So, because of resonance, the amplitude of C would be the largest of these B, C and D because of the resonance with A. Their frequencies match and therefore, the pendulum C develops a larger amplitude. We must remember that a vibrating system resonates at its own natural frequency. I have told you that each system has its natural frequency and therefore, this natural frequency has to match with the forcing frequency. You must have seen this advertisement on TV. An opera singer is able to break a wine glass just by singing a certain note. You must have seen this, this very common advertisement on TV. The singer first taps the glass and listens to the natural frequency of the sound emitted. You see, those singers have very sensitive ears. They can guess the frequency, the natural frequency of the system. Then she sings in the same frequency, that is in the natural frequency. The resulting resonance builds up the amplitude and the glass breaks. If a system is subject to a mixture of several frequencies, then the system selects one which is equal to its natural frequency and resonates to it. An earthquake for example, has several frequencies, a few hertz, 1, 2, 3, 4 hertz and a building has its some natural frequency. So, out of this jumble of frequencies, the building selects one which is equal to its natural frequency and resonates to this frequency. And if resonance uh, builds a, a large amplitude, then damage can be caused to the building. That is why structural engineers study the site, so that it is not going to have many earthquakes and not very uh, earthquakes are of high power. And they satisfy themselves that the upcoming structures will be safe. In the next lecture, we shall start the study of waves. First, we shall see how waves are different from oscillations. 
then we'll study the characteristics of waves and we shall see that waves are of two kinds the one is the longitudinal wave the other is the transverse wave and we'll see uh, the characteristics of these two kinds of waves. <laughs>